Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook. The Brody. Russ is one of my favorite players and is one of the biggest reasons I became a Thunder fan. I even have a poster of him by my bed where he watches me sleep every night. His ungodly athleticism, the intensity and ferocity with which he plays every game. It's unparalleled. He's just awesome. There's a reason both Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant have compared themselves to Russ. Yet, despite playing with some of the greatest players of all time, an NBA championship continues to elude Russ. And a significant reason for that is due to two factors that have been a consistent bane of his success, and two factors that make it very difficult to be a Westbrook fan at times. These factors are his decision making, and his shooting. This, of course, isn't to say that Russ can't flat out shoot. Numerous times across his career, he would catch fire and, at least momentarily, would look like one of the best shooters in the league. But the other 90% of the time, this is not the case. There are several factors that contribute to Russ being a subpar shooter. A big one is his shot selection, which lends itself to his decision making. However, there are also several problems with his general shooting mechanics that make shooting consistently a bit more difficult for him. These issues include things like not arcing the ball enough, sometimes releasing the ball after the apex of his jump and as he's falling down, rarely holding the follow through after the shot, tends to shoot in two motions as opposed to one fluid motion like the league's best shooters do. By November 2016, at least statistically, Westbrook had attained the illustrious title of worst volume three-point shooter in NBA history. Yet, despite already being a full-time bricklayer for his entire career, in the past few seasons, Russ has begun working on that trade in overtime. And after already being one of the worst shooters in NBA history, he's become unequivocally more shit. Across the first nine years of his career, up until the end of his MVP season in 2017, Russ shot 30.2% from three, and if you remove his rookie and sophomore seasons from that equation, he shot 31.8% from three. Of course, these percentages aren't particularly great, like, at all. But when you look at what he's been shooting since 2017, they start to look a bit better. Since 2017, Russ has shot 28.2% from three. That's a percentage drop of nearly 4% compared to his shooting across the seven seasons prior. Not the absolute biggest drop off in the world but a noticeable decline nonetheless. Furthermore, what makes this downswing even more peculiar is that the season right before his decline began, in 2017, Russ had the best three-point shooting year of his entire career when he shot 34.3% from three. At that point in time, one might have reasonably thought that Russ had finally figured out how to shoot more consistently and that his percentages would continue to trend up moving forward. But instead, the complete and utter opposite happened, with the subsequent seasons being some of the worst shooting seasons of his entire career. However, it hasn't only been his three-point shooting that's seen a down Turn. But the much more baffling phenomenon is what happened to his free throw shooting. Leading up to the 2018 season, Russ was always a crap three-point shooter. It was just that starting in 2018, he became even more crap from beyond the arc. Something he was good at, however, in fact really good at, was free throw shooting. Across his first nine years in the NBA, Russ was automatic from the free throw line, shooting 81.9%. But in the years since, the charity stripe has been much less charitable to Russ, with his free throw shooting in the past three seasons only being 71.9%, a whole 10% worse than his previous career average. Usually, players that are good free throw shooters will tend to stay that way for their career, and not, you know, suddenly get way fucking worse for no reason. I mean, you know something's probably wrong when even his own team's announcer is calling him Westbrook. And that's what Westbrook brings to the Rockets. So here I am, a Russell Westbrook fan watching in agony as my guy continues to shoot worse and worse each consecutive year, with him going from never missing a clutch shot in 2017 to airballing the exact same type of shot in 2020, and thus thought to myself, why? Scared. Why not? No mess for and with that single thought, my quest had begun to find an answer to man's greatest mystery. Why has Russell Westbrook forgotten how to shoot? Immediately, I set a team of our best researchers at Red Thunder on the job. And by that, I mean I went onto Reddit and asked the exact question I was trying to answer and let other people answer it for me. The following is what I discovered. And although this video is titled The Reason Russell Westbrook Has Forgotten How to Shoot, it should actually be titled The Potential Reasons Russell Westbrook Has Forgotten How to Shoot. As at the end of the day, my suggested reasons in this video are just speculation from a dumb Australian NBA fan. I just thought the more accurate title didn't have a nice ring to it. 
Since he was in high school, Russ's free throw shooting routine has always consisted of him walking to half court and then back before shooting his free throw. However, beginning with the 2018 NBA season, this part of his free throw shooting routine had to be shafted due to rule changes from the league. In an effort to speed up games and have less time needlessly wasted, the league introduced a rule that meant players could no longer walk past the three-point line if they were shooting free throws. If they do, they will receive a technical foul for delay of game. Now, although this rule change obviously didn't have any sort of direct impact on Russ's actual shooting mechanics, the simple fact that his free throw routine had to be significantly altered, the one he had used for the entirety of his basketball playing career, clearly impacted him mentally and his ability to hit free throws consistently. I used to shoot and walk back behind the three, um, and I'm not allowed to do that because of this new rule. Uh, I've been doing that shit since high school, so just gotta figure it out, man, and figure out a different routine where I can take some time and take a deep breath and after being an 82% free throw shooter for the first nine years of his career, including a career high 84.5% from the free throw line in 2017, once this new rule was implemented, his free throw shooting has been worse off ever since and he's yet to return to even 80%. You would think that an all NBA talent like Westbrook would be able to adjust to simply being unable to walk back a few extra feet, yet that evidently doesn't appear to be the case. Another possible triple double, did he just air ball a free throw? The importance a player's free throw routine plays in mentally preparing them for their free throws should not be overlooked. For example, we've literally seen DeAndre Jordan, who was a career 44% free throw shooter heading into the 2019 season, suddenly become a 70.5% free throw shooter that year after a simple change to his free throw routine. This is what he does, he touches the ball after being fouled. He'll get the ball, set his feet, look at his teammate, and ask them, who do you got? Watch for it. There it is. Two triples and fire. That is so odd. A strong free throw routine is an important thing for NBA players, and Russ's free throw shooting has just simply never been the same since his routine was thrown out of whack by rule changes from the league. Another aspect to consider is that in those few extra moments Russ would gain as he walked to the half court, those extra seconds provided him an opportunity to breathe, relax, lower his heart rate, and stabilize himself before taking his free throws. And for someone that is constantly attacking the ring with as much force and power that Russ is every game, those extra moments to catch your breath can be a big help. Father Time is undefeated, and once Father Time has you in his crosshairs, at some point in the near future, you're a goner. 2018 is, without question, the final year of Russ's athletic prime. That season he was dunking on and posterizing the league like he had done so throughout his entire career. It was in this season that he had one of his greatest all-time dunks when he stole Thonmaker's soul. But in the following season, from the eye test alone, Russ's athleticism was clearly waning and on the decline. As an OKC fan, I try to watch the vast majority of Thunder games, and watching Russ's athleticism disappear before my eyes in 2019 was just fucking tragic. All of a sudden, he was no longer making the same dunks that we had grown accustomed to seeing from him throughout his NBA career. For example, in a game that season, I can vividly remember watching him as he went up to posterize JaVale McGee and got blocked. Then a month later, he tried to do the same dunk on Wendell Carter Jr and got blocked once more. And then a month after that, he got blocked by the ring on a wide open dunk attempt. And in the following season, he once more missed the exact same wide open dunk. Although he played his missed dunk off with a smile, I was at home crying inside because it was clear he no longer had the same lift in his legs that he used to. It's not just the eye test suggesting he's not dunking like he used to. The statistics back that claim up too. Although Russ had something of a dunking resurgence in the 2020 season after joining a Rockets team with significantly more spacing than he had ever played with before, the dunks he was throwing down still didn't have the same level of unreal explosion and power that they once did. Now the reason Russ's declining athleticism matters in relation to his shooting is because Russ is someone that has always jumped really high on his jump shots. So the fact that in the past couple of seasons he no longer has the same lift and burst in his legs that he's been used to playing with his entire career, that means he no longer gets as high when jumping for his jump shots, and thus is likely throwing him off his rhythm and contributing to his declining 3 point shooting percentage. Although the fact that Russ is still one of the most explosive and athletic players in the league really speaks volumes as to just how insanely athletic he was in his prime. For the first five seasons of his career, Russ was Iron Man. I am Iron Man. 
He didn't miss a single game. However, that all immediately changed when a dirty ass rabbit dog decided to jump into his knees in the first round of the 2013 playoffs. Since that injury, Russ has never played all 82 games in a season and has had a number of further injuries over the years that have caused him to miss time, particularly in the past two seasons. And when coming back from injury, Russ has shown a consistent trend of playing like shit before eventually getting his rhythm back. This was a trend that can be observed even in the 2014 season when he was coming back from knee surgery necessitated by Patrick Beverly's dirty play. During his first month returning to play in the 2013-2014 NBA season, Russ shot 38% from the field, 30% from three, and 71% from the charity stripe. In the 2017 season, Russ had a healthy year and played the best basketball of his career. A season in which he broke Oscar Robertson's triple-double record and stole the MVP from James Harden. In the following off-season, however, it became evident that Russ was having knee troubles when he underwent a platelet-rich plasma injection on his right knee. A platelet-rich plasma injection is basically surgery that helps recovery and healing from an injury. And then, as a result of coming back from injury and after missing the start of training camp, Russ came into the 2018 season playing pretty darn shit. During his first month back, Russ shot 39% from the field, 32% from three, and 71% from the free throw line. Although after this stretch of bad play, Russ would get his rhythm going and play much better for the rest of the season. Coming into the 2019 season, Russ had reportedly spent his summer hard at work on improving his shooting. Of course, at this point in time, he was just coming off a disappointing playoffs where he got eliminated in the first round by a team with no all-stars led by a rookie. And in the final minutes of his final game that season, with the Thunder down by three, Russ bricked two game-tying attempts from three. As a Thunder fan, that game was truly depressing to watch. So heading into the 2019 season, it was good to hear the reports of Russ focusing on improving his shooting, as that was obviously a significant flaw of his. Yet, whatever work or progress he made that offseason must have completely dissipated the second he underwent further knee surgery before the season started, as after missing training camp in the first couple games of the season, Russ came into that year playing like absolute dog shit. Across his first 18 games of the season, which included a two week break after spraining his ankle, Russ shot 45% from the field, which is all right, but all also a blistering 22% from three and a red hot 56% from the free throw line. And then just as he looked like he was returning to form and getting his rhythm back, he tore a ligament in his left hand that he played through for the final six weeks of the season. It was all a similar story going into the 2020 season. Knee surgery in the off season, except this time with the added addition of surgery on his left hand, played like shit when he returned after missing the start of training camp, started to get his rhythm going around late January. In fact, he actually began playing one of the best stretches of basketball in his entire career at that point, although that stretch quickly came to an unanticipated end when the season got suspended due to corona. <coughs> And just as the NBA was set to return six months later, Russ would actually get corona. <coughs> he would recover in time to play in the bubble, although it would only be briefly as he quickly injured his quad. And then, when he finally returned from that injury in game five of the first round of the playoffs, with all this time off from basketball, he once more played like dog shit and continued to play like dog shit for the entirety of the playoffs. All of this is to say that Russ simply plays bad for decent stretches of time when he's returning from injury, and is part of the reason his shooting percentages have taken a hit. And considering his age, the increasing frequency of his injuries over the past couple seasons, and his style of play, which involves constantly attacking the rim at full force, it's certainly a concerning sign for Russ's future, as those injuries will continue to no doubt pile up in these upcoming seasons. <laughs> So I'd like to preface this part by noting that it's certainly the most speculative reason I've put forward thus far, and could very well not have any actual basis in reality and be nothing more than unfounded bro science, but I'ma just put it out there anyway. Ever since coming into the league, Russ has been an athletic specimen. Strength, power and explosion have never exactly been much of a weak point for Westbrook. Nonetheless, if you compare pictures of him over the years, it's very evident that he's put on a shitload of muscle compared to when he was a rookie. In fact, when comparing his overall body frame now, to even just a few years ago, Russ almost looks skinny in comparison. The 2017 offseason was bulking season for Westbrook, as during that time he visibly put on a heap more muscle across his upper body, particularly on his arms, shoulders and chest, and he's maintained that level of muscle ever since. Now getting swole is all nice and dandy, and by putting on more muscle he was likely trying to offset his inevitable decline in natural strength and athleticism that comes with aging. The issue is however, putting on extra muscle to the extent that Russ has may actually impact one's ability 
ability to shoot. And the fact that his decline in shooting coincides with this new muscle gain is intriguing. Think of all the greatest basketball shooters in history. Players like Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Ray Allen, Reggie Miller, Joe Ingles, Kyle Korver. A common theme is that none of these dudes are particularly big. And of course, when I say big, I mean relative to other NBA players. Obviously, if your average diabetic Joe walked past six foot three Steph Curry on the street, he would seem as absolutely jacked. The only big guy I can think of that's currently known as a shooter is Jay Crowder, although he's certainly the exception and not the rule. Nearly all the guys in the NBA that are built like football players can't shoot. Think of guys like Zion Williamson, Lou Dord, Russell Westbrook, Eric Bledsoe. All of these guys have a lot of muscle on them and cannot shoot, except for Lou Dord in Game 7 of the playoffs because he's a GOAT. The reason these guys are not good shooters is because there's a correlation between deteriorated shooting ability and weight. This was something covered in a video from Jimmy Highroller a couple years ago, where he explained why taller players tend to be worse shooters than smaller players. Extra weight that makes shooting more difficult explains why, for example, we have players like Kevin Durant, who is the same height as Dwight Howard, being able to shoot it from deep because he has the body frame of a snake. Meanwhile, Dwight is a terrible shooter because instead of shoulders, he has two cannons attached to his upper body. Pushing on extra muscle muscle like Russ did can impact one's range of motion with their arms. And although it may only be slight, that's enough to alter your shooting mechanics and subsequently lead to worsened shooting. If you actually examine Russ's shot mechanics whilst shooting free throws from a few years ago and compare it to now, there's a noticeable difference. As Russ brings the ball up to shoot, if you pause the screen to see where the point that the ball is closest to his face is and compare it between a few years ago to now, you can see that nowadays he brings the ball up much closer to his face than he used to. Although it's only minor, the difference means he's now shooting more of a two motion shot that has a slight hitch in it as opposed to a more one motion fluid shot where he simply brings the ball straight up and releases. I don't necessarily know for certain if this chain shot mechanic is due to his muscle gain or not, but it is something to consider nonetheless. <laughs> Russ has never been much of a mentally weak individual. His alpha dog personality is something that has permeated through his actions on and off the court for his whole career. He's never been afraid to speak or act the way he wants to, and certainly doesn't appear to care what others think of him, something he's even said as much himself. You know, I've been blessed with the time to not to give a fuck, so. After all, this is the same guy who's not afraid to yell, better double me, while his team is down 30 points about to be eliminated from the playoffs. That'll be now the 14 foul. <laughs> and you can't say better double down 29. And with the way he dresses, you would certainly hope he doesn't have any self-esteem issues. But nonetheless, I do believe there might just be a couple mental demons floating around in that teenage mutant ninja turtle head of his, which are playing a part in his shooting woes. And yeah, I know that suggesting mental demons for his lackluster shooting kind of contradicts my previous point that his struggles might be due to physical changes in his body, but I'm just spitting out potential ideas here, so fuck off. Because interestingly enough, there are a couple signs that point towards his shooting decline being more of a mental problem than anything else. For example, in the 2019 season, where Russ shot a career low in absolutely abysmal 65.6% .6 from the free throw line, he actually shot great during clutch situations and in the playoffs. In games throughout the season where there was less than 5 minutes in the game and the score was within 5 points, Russ shot 80.4% on his free throws. And in situations where there was less than a minute in the game and the score was within 5 points, Russ shot 91.3%. And then come the playoffs, where OKC faced Portland in the first round, a series in which Russ played like shit in nearly every single game. There was one thing he managed to do consistently well, and that was to hit his free throws. For the 2019 playoffs, Russ averaged 88.5% from the free throw line. So the fact that Russ shoots his free throws exceptionally well in clutch situations and in the playoffs and subpar for the rest of the season does seem to suggest that his shooting struggles are mental, as when the situation calls for it, he's able to lock in and focus on hitting the shot. I don't know what the hell is going on through his head the rest of the time, whether he's overthinking it, underthinking it, thinking about all the rings he would have won if him, KD and James Harden stayed together, but in any case, there's definitely something going on in that thick head of his. I also think that just maybe, all the outside noise and criticism of his shooting from fans in the media has finally made its way into his head. The fact he finally stopped chucking threes midway through the 2020 season would at least seem to suggest so. Although he played some of the best basketball in his career when he stopped shooting threes at his usual clip, on the occasion when he did take them, he seemingly did so without the usual confidence we were accustomed to seeing from him. Like, for example, in a game against the Clippers, when Russ was left wide open to take the game-winning three, that brick 
he threw up probably couldn't have clanked any harder off the back iron if he tried. And later on in the playoffs, where he shot 24.2% from three on 33 total attempts, in that Lakers series especially, Russ was just being left wide open to shoot that three ball and consistently continued to miss horribly. I don't know, maybe that level of disrespect was messing with his head a bit, and the fact that he continued to just miss and miss probably didn't help the old confidence too much either. <laughs> For the first time in four seasons, Russ has had a healthy off-season, one free of surgery, and coming into the 2021 season, he's been playing pretty well for the Wizards. Although his efficiency across his first two games, which is obviously only a very small sample size, hasn't exactly been what one might call impressive. Now I don't think anyone expects him to continue shooting 0% from 3, but nonetheless, his shooting is clearly still an issue for him, and if he wants any chance of aging gracefully, he needs to remember how to shoot shoot and then learn how to do it better than before. Sending lethal shooter a DM never hurt anybody, but in any case, I wish Russ the best of luck moving forward and hope that he and Beal can do something special in Washington. Westbrook.